This is a short video to kind of tie some of the conceptual work that we did in the early parts of the infiltration discussion with the modeling and the equations that you're applying in lab three. So if you'll recall, we kind of used this as our guiding principles, this depth and moisture content figure right here on the left. And essentially what you'll see is that this uh, relationship between moisture content on the x-axis and depth on the y is relatively fluid. It is um, has some transition zones early on where you start to see saturation permeate into the subsurface. And then it has even a little bit more of a transition zone as this wetting front proceeds down through the soil. So what we're doing with Green Amped is really trying to simplify this figure and allow us to do some quantitative work to better understand and estimate the rate of infiltration and the total amount of infiltration. So let's start up here with this little graph here up on the right hand corner. So this is time on the X and the infiltration rate, remember this is the rate at which water is moving into the soil, is looks something like this curve where we have rapid um, infiltration and then it slowly reaches an asymptote. And <clears throat> Green amped is really only used when we have what we would call instantaneous ponding, such that our rate of either rainfall or in the case of lab three, our rate of irrigation is greater than the initial uh, infiltration capacity. And so that creates this kind of instantaneous ponding condition where we can apply the green amped equation. Now, if you'll recall, there are two soils that you're working on in lab three. One of them has ponding and one of them doesn't. And when there is no ponding, essentially that means that all of the uh, water that comes through the irrigation system is allowed to infiltrate. So that is a situation where our irrigation rate or our intensity down is actually down here below that asymptotic kind of flattening out of that curve. <clears throat> so that one should be pretty simple. You don't need to even apply green amped at all. But with the case of the soil that does have the ponding, we need to apply this relationship. And what you have is a situation that looks more like this one over here on the left. So for a while, we have our infiltration rate is somewhere in the middle. It's not above that. It doesn't initially instantaneously start ponding. We don't exceed it right away, but we see what uh, this kind of period where we see infiltration happening, the infiltration rate is actually equal to the rate of rainfall or in this case irrigation uh, application and so simply our amount of, of infiltration is the total amount of infiltration is the rate which is this flat line times the amount of time that that happens this time that it occurs over the x-axis so we've got our f times time and that is our total amount of water that infiltrates during that period where our rainfall intensity um, is not creating a ponding condition but after a bit, we do start to see ponding. And so this time to ponding is the first step thing that you calculate when you're trying to figure this out, because that tells you that that time to ponding is actually shorter than the total amount of time that you're irrigating. So you're actually going to have some ponding occur. So before that, we have free water flowing into the soil. After that, we start to see reduced infiltration because those pore spaces are filling and we have what we call that wetting front moving down into the soil. And that's where we need to apply the green amped approach to help us better model that infiltration rate explicitly. So if you look at this graph, again, I'm just pulling this back again a little bit. We've got that same curve here where we see pretty much free infiltration happening, and then the green amped region following after that. So this first part, your rate of infiltration is simply equal to your rate of irrigation. And then this last part of the back half is where you start to apply the green amped approach. So step one is to calculate that time at which you see ponding occur. And the equation is listed right here. It's also in the supplemental text that I gave you. So that calculation of time to ponding is really critical because that tells you whether or not you are going to see ponding before um, your either your rainfall stops or your irrigation stops in this case. Once you calculate that, then you can start to work on getting the shape of this curve figured out. And this is the complicated expression that you must use to do so. And note that we have F over here and we also have F in here inside this logarithm. So it's really difficult to calculate it explicitly. So this is where we use the goal seek 
uh, approach in Excel to help us narrow down what that F is at each time step. So the first one you'll do is at the time of ponding, right? So you can get F at this exact time. Note, this is the little f curve, but you're actually calculating the big F. And so just a reminder about those two different, different parameters, little f is the infiltration rate, and the, low, the uppercase left f, or the capital F, is the infiltration amount. So the next step after you get this infiltration amount at each time step, then you can use the equation, which is unfortunately not on this slide, um, to calculate the infiltration rate. So here we are in our Excel sheet, and I just want to remind you before we dive into all the equations that this has a setup such that you are really clear about where those design inputs go. They're kind of up here on the top, and then your calculated values follow, and then some design uh, calculations, but also some choices about which direction to go. So that is really clear if someone else were to come in and use your spreadsheet. Um, you'll notice that we have two soils. So this is just simply soil one and soil two. Pretty much everything is just copied and pasted. And then there's some little bit of different calculations based on um, what you find in your design uh, kind of decision point here that makes you do different things as you move along. So the first step is to calculate time of ponding. The equation is listed right here. It's a little blurry, but you can see that it has K, the section head, delta theta, the uh, intensity. Again, this is our irrigation rate in this case, and then again, our K in, uh, in the bottom of that equation. So if we come over here, you'll see that kind of worked out and calculated in this equation. Everything's kind of populated based on the different colors that light up. One thing I wanted to draw your attention to, there's a few questions about this, is how do I calculate delta theta and the assumptions that go into that? So first of all, we are told in our scenario that the irrigation system will turn on once we uh, get low enough that we have, um, we kind of like fall below a 17% moisture content by volume. So that suggests that the, that's the lowest it will ever go, and that's when our, where our starting point is, and we're gonna start getting wetter from there. So that's our initial soil moisture, 17%, so 0.17. And then in this case, we um, set our final moisture content simply to the porosity of the soil. So this is a, a somewhat simplifying assumption, but it helps us really, we do that by assuming that at that time to ponding, we have a very narrow, um, kind of shallow, saturated bit of soil right at the top that's going to be traveling down through the soil. So that's the start of our wetting front, and that's initially the porosity. So that's how you calculate that delta theta. Uh, the next step is to, to calculate this F for each of those time points. So I just set up my spreadsheet down here. You can see kind of all the bits. It's a little messy because I haven't completely done everything all nice and tidy just yet but I wanted to get this out so you guys could see it. And essentially we have time um, in hours, and then I put them in minutes because it's a little bit easier to um, graph and understand and it's a little more intuitive. Um, but remember, we calculate this time to ponding at six, almost seven minutes. So before then, our F is simply the irrigation rate times how much time has elapsed. So we aren't applying green amped in any way. Either we have not exceeded our infiltration capacity. There's no ponding occurring yet. So we have infiltration, just water is moving into the soil. So that happens up until this time, uh, time to ponding. So right after that is when we start to see the, um, the decrease in the rate of infiltration. So I just started that at another three minutes after that. You could start it at seven minutes. It, it's kind of arbitrary. You're just trying to get the shape of that curve. So what I what we've done here, this you'll see is just a number because this is what we use the solver tool to do. But this is where the equation is all kind of included in this particular cell. So if you look at this equation up here, we've got the left-hand side from F minus FP, all this nonsense is all in that left-hand side. So there's the what that looks like in the different cells that it's referencing, etc. Um, you can't see J29, it's kind of underneath of there, but that's F, it's highlighting that one because F pops in there several times. So you'll note that the left-hand side of that equation is referencing F and F is what we're solving for. 
On the right-hand side of the equation, it doesn't reference f at all. It actually has k, but then it references the time step. So that's really helpful, too, because that changes every time. So we have to actually calculate and solve for an f each at each time step. So what I'm trying to do, really, is basically make that difference as low as it can be. So we're going to try to set the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the equations equal to each other. And if you're on a Mac like me, it's a little different than if you're on a PC. So I will show you how to do it here on a Mac. And if you go back to Canvas, you'll see a video similar to this from Dr. Kalita a few years back, where she walks through a little bit more details of the lab, actually, and also shows you how to do the goal seek option in a PC. So for those of you Mac users out there, this one is for you. So what I'm trying to do is solve this equation, set this equal to zero, right? So I'm going to come in here. Um, it's under the data analysis tool pack. You got to add in the solver piece. So once you do that, you'll get the solver button pop up. And so when you click that, it looks like this. And so what we're trying to do is our set objective is M29. So that's this one that we're trying to make zero, the difference between those two. And we can maximize, minimize. It's a really flexible tool. I'm actually going to, in this case, set it to a value of zero. And then I'm going to do so by changing variables in the in cells. So the ones that I'm going to change are actually that F. So this is what I'm allowed to change each time. And so typically you might want to put some constraints in here such that F can't be less than zero and things like that. So you could say, OK, I'm actually going to say F must be greater than or equal to zero. So we don't want any negative values. That's a typical one you might want to use. Um, this already has this thing, main unconstrained variables, non-negative. So it's kind of duplicative, but it's a good one if you don't notice that or if that gets unchecked. There's other ones you could potentially use if you have some kind of relationship that you know you don't want to go to a certain maximum or minimum. But those, that's where all those constraint pieces can go. So in um, in this case, we can select our solving method, and this is really helpful because it gives you a little explanation. So we're going to use this nonlinear engine because we use, these are relatively nonlinear functions. We have a curved approach. We don't have a linear relationship, so we're not going to use that one. Um, and there's other ones too. So um, there's only three options in this case, but there's lots of uh, numerical methods that could be used to kind of constrain this. But we're going to go ahead and use this one. That's the default. And then I'm going to hit solve. And then it pops up, it says, keep solver solution. Yes, please, and hit OK. And so then it populated that, and I actually had done it already, so it was in there. We'll start this one with, I don't know what it is, so we'll just hit um, a good starting point is simply the um, time times the irrigation rate. So we'll use that as our starting point. Notice that, oops, no thank you. We're going to keep that there and we're going to do this again. And so we can do this for every single time step. So we'll do it again. This notice this kind of stays the same, but in this case it said J. Nope, we actually want this one. We're changing, make sure we're in the right row. Set objective is actually going to be now row 30, row 30. We can just delete that one so we don't have to keep updating it every time because it already has this non negative piece there. And so now we hit solve. Keep solver solution, OK. Note that it's a little bit less. I had guessed the multiplier was 0.4. We're down a little bit. So this is our F. And I did that for all of these as we went along. So now what we want to do is calculate, this is the amount of infiltration. We want to calculate the infiltration rate using this equation. So come back over here. In this case, remember, we just said the infiltration rate is equal to our irrigation rate because we don't have any ponding yet. So that just keeps going down as, as two. And then when we get to here, now we apply this equation. So you'll notice this has K, it has the suction head, our delta theta again, and now here's where we reference the F that we just solved for, and, and there we go. So we calculate that as we move along. And then it looks something like this when we plot it. So hopefully that was a little helpful, kind of unpacking the different pieces. Um, if you followed along, you got all of the um, relatively close uh, to the right numerical responses, but recognizing that something like this is also helpful um, in your uh, 
visualization of the two parameters. So I just plotted both of them together. Note that I kind of made this one as dots. It's helpful to draw the lines so they are visually easier to see. Um, and then you can also calculate your cumulative infiltration over time, which is kind of a helpful tool to visualize the difference in how much water you're actually able to get into the soil when you have the two different soil types. All right, with that, I think I'm going to call this a wrap. I hope that was helpful. Talk to you next time.